subscribe to bisbo and press the bell icon see boring news turn into enjoyable stories undoubtedly the armies of mughal emperor aurangzeb destroyed several temples replacing them with mosques among which was kashi vishwanath in 1669 at the time called adi vishveshwar temple Written evidence of this exists in the form of Aurangzeb's own official records maintained by Saki Mustad Khan in his chronicles Masire Alamgiri which covers the last 4 decades of Aurangzeb's rule until his death in 1707. The destroyed temple was renamed Alamgiri Masjid after Aurangzeb who was also known by that name but because another temple he destroyed in Banaras was also given the same name this one acquired the name Gyanwapi after a well located in its premises. Vapi means well gyan is knowledge the well of knowledge a strange coincidence of a sanskrit name for the symbol of an arabic faith that stands testimony to the intermingling of people and cultures aurangzeb however was not the first person to destroy kashi vishwanath temple qutubuddin aibak destroyed it in 1192 almost 400 years later in 1585 was it rebuilt by the nagpur brahmin narayan bhatta who came to kashi the center for learning in those days ironically it was rebuilt under the patronage of emperor akbar whose great grandson aurangzeb destroyed it 100 years later when ahilya bai holkar became ruler of indore she constructed the kashi vishwanath temple as you see it today with the foot high stone statue of the nandi bull gifted to her by the rana of nepal and she rebuilt it right next to the gyanwapi mosque leaving the original holy well of wapi between the two holy places the site holds great importance for hindus as it is believed that this is the very spot where lord shiva cast his celestial beam of light and according to hindu scriptures is home to one of only 12 jyotirlingas that exist a jyotirlinga that was apparently found after a survey conducted by the archaeological survey of india the asi on orders from a varanasi court based on a petition filed by five women in august 2021 who was seeking daily permission to worship shringar gauri a deity that exists on a part of a temple wall that was never demolished and which today acts as the back wall of the mosque prior to the petition as per tradition hindus were praying there for only one day in a year the fourth day of navratri a practice that has been going on for over 400 years to which the muslims have never objected But after the demolition of the Babri Masjid in December 1992 to maintain peace the area was barricaded by the government which later became permanent and is only open to the public on the one auspicious day the 4th of Navratri it is very obvious that the structure was a temple far more obvious than the case of Ram Janmabhoomi the back wall of the earlier temple was never destroyed and the place from which the mosque construction begins is obvious So even if a shivling were to be found inside the mosque it would not be a novelty as the history of gyanwapi is an accepted fact except that such a find helps build sentiment to return the mosque to its original owners the hindus but blocking it is the places of worship act 1991 passed by the narsimha rao government at the height of the ram janmabhoomi movement over the objections of a weaker bjp an act that seeks to preserve the religious character of any structure as it existed at the time of independence a law reiterated at the time of the 2019 babri masjid ram janmabhoomi supreme court decision whatever may have happened before that there should be no such retrogression into the past however the act while watertight has a small loophole section 43a that exempts historical monuments or archaeological sites or remains from the provision of this act Anything over a hundred years old can be classified as a historical monument, which leaves the door open for almost any kind of challenge. It is under this exemption that, somewhat harshly, the lower court ordered a videography inside the mosque premises. Even if it means getting locks opened or broken, the images of the subsequent survey were illegally leaked to the media. The Muslims' objections were rejected on the same grounds by the Supreme Court. Ascertainment of the religious character of a place is not barred by the Places of Worship Act. The license given to examine the historical character of religious places has led to a flood of similar petitions. The site article14.com lists several identically worded petitions against Gyanwapi and a copy paste for 12 other Islamic era monuments. Following which in May 2022 
a Mathura district judge was bold enough to observe. Places of worship act is not applicable at Shahi Eidgah Mosque, Krishna Janmabhoomi site. The Shahi Eidgah Mosque, just like Gyanwapi, was built inside the Krishna Janmabhoomi complex on the orders of Aurangzeb. Friday prayers inside a mosque in the Qutub Minar complex that have been going on for years were stopped by the ASI in May 2022. While a plea was filed in a Delhi court seeking restoration of 27 Hindu and Jain temples in the Qutub Minar premises. Yet another petition to examine the Taj's closed 22 rooms was dismissed with disdain by the Allahabad High Court. Are you a historian? Go do MA PhD. Don't make a mockery of the PIL system. The ASI later released pictures of items within some of the 22 rooms and clarified, There is no secret in those rooms. Under this change sentiment, it is therefore an irrelevant argument to say that the claimed shivling in Gyanwapi is actually a water fountain, positioned inside a pond used for vazoo or purification before ritual prayer, or that a 1937 judgment in the case of Deen Mohammed was his state secretary gave the entire compound of the Gyanwapi mosque complex to the Muslim Wakaf, or that a former Mahant of Kashi Vishwanath temple claims, When Aurangzeb destroyed the temple, my ancestors took the shivling and kept it hidden for many years. Or whether Ahilya Bai Holkar placed the original shivling back in the new Kashi Vishwanath temple or not. Because to many Hindus, the destroyed temples are like old wounds one can scratch on and inflict pain. Seeing it differently from a purely Hindu perspective, Mughals were destroyers, the British were suppressors. When Hindus were finally free, they are now restrained under Places of Worship Act. Not entirely, however, as during the height of partition, many mosques were forcibly converted into temples. Three in Haryana, Sonipat's Jama Masjid, Hisar's Danashira Mosque, Farooq Nagar's 1732 Jama Masjid as well. While Aurangabad's Jama Masjid built by the Khilji dynasty is now a Bharat Mata temple. What started as the BJP slogan in the 1990s, Ayodhya to jhanki hai, Kashi aur Mathura baaki hai. Ayodhya is just the beginning, Kashi and Mathura are remaining is now being played down by them as it controls both UP and the centre and is responsible for maintaining law and order. Gyanwapi mosque fate will be decided by courts and constitution, which is likely to be chipped away by our challenges to the Places of Worship Act, something the Sangh was against anyway. Why should the date be fixed as 15th August 1947? Our civilization is many centuries old. A process that is already in motion when in March 2021, the Supreme Court agreed to examine the validity of Places of Worship Act. The law is discriminatory as it deprives Hindus, Jains and Buddhists. RSS Chief Mohan Bhagwat gave hope in his recent address to 700 Swayam Sevaks. Why look for a shivling in every mosque? Gyan Wapi has a history which we cannot change now. But it is quite likely that the movement they started is no more under their control. Strangely, Aurangzeb himself before he raised the Vishweshwar temple, issued firmans. All temples of Kashi and its Brahmins shall be protected. Land grants are hereby given to them. And the Jangama Shaivites are given additional rights. So other than religious fervor, there appears to be more to the demolition than meets the eye. Sources suggest one reason could be in retaliation against local zamindars who were supporting the rising Maratha power. Whatever the reason was, maybe what India needs now is a court-like body like the Truth and Reconciliation Commission that was formed in South Africa in 1995 to help heal the country by uncovering the scope of temple conversions that had taken place during Muslim rule in India, with an emphasis on bringing about a reconciliation rather than penalizing a minority in lieu of past crimes committed centuries ago. Bisbo's Limerick Rewriting history can be a dangerous thing. Who knows what demons something like that can bring? Leave well alone and mute our baritone. It's now the century of India's spring. You will also find these sources listed in our video description section.